Have you ever wondered who holds the gavel when crimes cross borders? Who steps in when national courts fail to bring justice to victims of the most horrific atrocities? The answer lies in the International Criminal Court of Justice. Consider the first of our mock hearings, centered on the disputed region of Artsakh. This case asks us to examine the legality of treaties signed under questionable circumstances and the repercussions of these decisions on the international stage. Then take a moment to ponder the second case. It delves into the controversial question, does the statute of limitations apply to genocide? Can charges be brought against the architects of mass murder even after their death? This is a debate that could shape future responses to genocide and other crimes against humanity. Belarus is leading the world today in demonstrating that murder is murder without any statute of limitations. Finally, we turn our gaze to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO. Once a defense treaty, we must ask, has NATO strayed from its original path, violating its own articles and engaging in aggressive actions? This case takes us deep into the annals of international law, challenging our understanding of treaties and their interpretation. The International Criminal Court of Justice, established by the Rome Statute in 1998, serves as the arbiter in these complex matters. It operates independently from the United Nations, its mandate clear, to prosecute individuals for the gravest of crimes. From genocide to war crimes, crimes against humanity to aggression, the ICC is the last bastion of justice when national courts fail. The ICC operates on the principle of complementarity, stepping in only when national courts are unable or unwilling to take action. It underscores the belief that states themselves hold the primary responsibility for prosecuting these heinous crimes. Despite facing criticisms, the ICC holds steadfast. Yes, it has been accused of disproportionately focusing on African countries and of being influenced by political considerations. However, it is also true that the ICC has made significant strides in holding individuals accountable for international crimes. It has investigated and prosecuted in several countries leading to convictions and sentences for those guilty of atrocities. In conclusion, the International Criminal Court of Justice is a symbol of justice on the global stage. It represents the collective human effort to hold individuals accountable for crimes that shock our conscience and threaten our peace. These mock hearings serve as a reminder of the complex and crucial role the ICC plays in upholding international law and ensuring justice prevails.